हेलो फ्रेंड वेलकम टू मरीन इंजीनियरिंग हब दिस यू नाइटर चीफ इंजीनियर रवि गुप्ता टुडे इज अ पार्ट टू ऑफ द सी आई आई इन टुडे वीडियो वील टॉक अबाउट हाउ द सी आई आई इज कैलकुलेटेड सो बिफोर नोइंग अबाउट द सी आई कैलकुलेशन यू शुड नो दे आर फोर गाइडलाइन जी वन यू कैन सी इन द टॉप जी वन जी टू जी थ्री जी फोर G1 talks about the calculation method. G2 talks about the reference line. G3 talks about the required CII, and G4 talks about the rating. Okay, so let's see what is a CII calculation. How it is done. Before beginning the video, I want to request all of you, those who are watching this video, Marine Engineering Hub is a platform which make the video like this. Which is beneficial for the examination purpose and also for the ship related service. So please encourage us by subscribing. Many of us, many of many of you are watching, but still not subscribing. So please, friend, encourage us by subscribing. So and also, if you want to clear the exam quickly and if you want to interact with me, you can join the Marine Engineering Hub membership, and you can. Get exclusive perks, and you can get the videos which will be beneficial for your examination purpose. Okay, so let's start the today video. What is the CII calculation? How it is done? So in our first video, we have talked about we have talked that what is the CII, how the CII rating is done. Now we are talking about the CII calculation. So CII calculation is basically depending on ship types like bulk carrier, tanker, container, gas carrier. We are on the upper numerator. CO2 emission by dead weight into distance cell, but for the cruise ship, passenger ship, or row row ship, it is GT CO2 emission by GT into distance cell. The dead weight here will be taken, which is mentioned in the maximum summer load draft. This is the general formula of the CII calculation. But if we take a close look, the CO2 emission is basically The annual fuel consumption, which we are getting from the IMO DCS, into the conversion factor, the CO2 conversion factor, by the annual distance travelled into dead weight or GT, multiplied by correction factor. This correction factor is basically is given by the IMO based on suppose your ship is sailing on a rough weather or your ship is anchored for some period of time. So, in order to rectify this, there is a correction. Factor which has been given by the IMO based on the ship type. So, if in the examination they ask you what is the formula of the CO2 CII calculation, you just tell this formula. And if they want to elaborate, then you say this. Okay. Now, what is a G2? This G2 talks about reference line. Means basically the reference of a CII is Calculated based on the value given by the IMO for the different type of vessel. Like here, as you can see, for a vessel having dead weight greater than two lakh seventy nine thousand, the value of A and C means you can see this formula is almost same to the EDI. CII reference is equal to A into capacity. Capacity talks about dead weight tonnage for the other type of ship and GT for the row row and passenger ship of the sea power of the minus C. So what they mean to say that the value of A you should take in a case of bulk carrier having dead weight greater than two lakh seventy nine thousand, you should take a value of four seven four five, and you take take a value of six point point sixty two two two. But if your bulk carrier is less than two lakh seventy nine thousand, you should take a value of this. So depending upon the thing. Now what difference you are seeing here? So you are seeing here difference that if The vessel whose dead weight is more than two lakh seventy nine thousand, you have to instead of dead weight, you have to take this value. But if a vessel dead weight is less than this, then you have to take the dead weight of your vessel. Like same thing is in here in the LNG carrier. If your vessel is less than sixty five thousand, just take the sixty five thousand instead of dead weight. But if it is between that, then take the dead weight. So this value, capacity A and C, this value is given by the IMO based on your type of ship. So you are gonna get the reference line like the EDI here, okay? And after getting the reference line, now you need to know that what is 
value what value is the required value means what is the present value which you need for your ship so every year the IMO is increasing the deduction factor that is jet by 5 7 9 11 percent based on the year and hence the ship have to improve its operational performance every year to match up with the required CII so in order to match up with the required CII what they are doing the reduction factor is increasing every year like 5 7 9 11 percent till 2026 is 11 percent after that it will be decided so by factor of 2 it is getting increased so every year you need to increase the operational performance so that you can come up with the required CII so you are getting the reference line from the formula A into B by C okay A into capacity B is a capacity the capacity of a ship power C and the required you are getting from this formula depending on the reduction factor after that now you have to calculate the attain EDI attain EDI means what attain it basically that how much is your consumption so you have to calculate your attain EDI so how you will calculate so suppose let's take example suppose you have a bulk carrier having dead weight tonnage of 6200 gross tonnage of this distance travel is this and co2 emission is this so what will attain EDI so as we have seen here that attain E attain CII is CO2 emission by dead weight into distant travel or if you talk more pre precisely annual fuel consumption into CO2 factor by annual distant travel into dead weight or gross tonnage so here it is given dead weight is there here the distance travel is there here CO2 emission means combined of the annual fuel consumption into conversion factor is given so annual CO2 emission by dead weight into distance travel into 10 to the power 6 so what we are getting we are getting 4.69 value so at 10 CII that is G1 is 4.69 now what is the reference so reference will we will see what is the reference 4745 what is the 47475 that 4745 is the value which you are getting from here 4745 is the value of A C is that this and for dead weight you have to take the dead weight value so after taking this C A and C we are getting from the table C is the dead weight we are taking we are getting 4.96 so 4.96 is the reference so at 10 is 4.69 which are getting from this formula and C I reference we are getting from the formula A into B minus C so that we are getting that A and C value is being given by the IMO chart 4.96 we are getting now we have to calculate G3 that is a required so required will calculate based on the year so for the year of 2023 the reduction factor is 5 percent for a year of 2023 the reduction factor is 5 percent but if now we are in the year 24 so we carry out the reduction factor of 7 percent so let's take for a year 2023 the reduction factor is 5 percent so it is coming 4.71 so for the year of 2023 the reduction factor is 4.71 the 4.71 is the right now value and your attain is 4.69 so you have to find now dd vector what is the dd vector dd vector is basically here you can see dd vector dd vector is basically the attain edi attain cii by require cii the division which is done by attain cii by require cii give us the dd vector so we are getting this dd vector so now 4.71 is the attain is a 4.69 and required is the 4.71 so 4.69 by 4.71 we are getting 0.99 so now we come here so it is a 0.99 so 0.99 so it is falling in the category of C right if you are getting more than 0.99 so it is 0 0.99 0 0.94 more than and 1.06 so it is falling in the category D3 so D3 is basically the category of C. So here your step is falling in category C. So for quick synopsis, let's see. 
we are calculating first attain CII from the formula we are calculating CII reference from the formula after that we are calculating the required CII then we are calculating the DD vector which is the attain CII by required CII after that we are seeing that your value is 0.99 then we are going to the chart which is given by the IMO and in the chart you are seeing that 0.99 is falling for a bulk carrier is between 0.94 and 1.06 so D3 so you go to the D3 and minusing then you are getting this value of C category right so your vessel is falling in the C category now your vessel is falling in the C category so this is the thing now let's see now your vessel fall in C category so for the year 2023 having a reduction factor of 5% your vessel fall in the C category now for 2024 you are doing nothing because you think okay I am I am complying with the EXI vector as I am falling in C category I don't need to do anything because as you know as you know earlier video I told you that if you fall in a category D or E if you fall in a category D for a continuous period of 3 years in that case you have to submit a corrective action plan but if you are falling in category E then you have to submit a corrective action plan within one year so as you are falling in a category C you don't need to do anything so you are not doing anything and now in 2024 it is increased by 7% so when it is increased by 7% reduction factor the required CI value become 4.61 this value is becoming 4.61 so now you attain CII as you are doing nothing is still 4.69 so now again you are falling in category C after that you 4.51 you are falling in category C but 4.44 you are falling in category D so if you now you can see if you do nothing then if you are not improving your operational parameter after a period of time your vessel will shift from C category to D so CII the CIA concept is based on that that you have to continuously improve your performance so that you continue to follow continue to fall on the category ABC if you don't improve your performance or personal performance then you may fall in category D and again you have to submit the corrective action plan to the IMO okay so that is the main thing so now the question come to our mind okay how you will improve the CI rating so in order to improve the CI rating, the all the CI is based on which which thing? The CI is based on what? The CI is based on the CO2 emission. So if we can reduce the CO2 emission, we can reduce the we can improve the CI rating. So if a ship is running on a low carbon fuel, can clearly get a higher rating than one on a fossil fuel. So why? Because the low carbon fuel will have less amount of carbon compared to the fossil fuel because fossil fuel is containing a large amount of carbon and hence the rating will be higher higher rating means it will be a or b compared to the fossil fuel it will be c or d so other than that we can also improve the performance by doing some small small thing like hull killing to reduce the drag after that speed and route optimization installation of low energy bulb light auxiliary power like all so if anybody asks you what are the thing which you can improvise in order to improve the CI rating so your answer should be first that we should shift to the other source of fuel in order to improve the carbon emission if we can reduce the carbon emission in that case we can improve the CI rating so which type of fuel you can go for an electric if you go for an electric, you can reduce the carbon emission of 50-90%. Bio LNG LPG, then you can reduce 35 to 35%. If you are going for biofuel third generation, then 90% you can reduce the CO2 emission. If you are going for hydrogen and other synthetic fuel, you can reduce it by 80 to 90%. If you are going for energy management, then you can reduce by 1 to 10%. Other than that, if if you don't have an option for changing the fuel, then in that case, other thing what you can do. You can improve the hull and superstructure. You can remove the hull drag by removing the biofouling. Bio you can optimize the speed and routing. You can 
optimize the console speed and capability you can optimize the voyage by following the proper route you can take the fleet management logistic and incentive you can see how you can improve and you can ultimately install a different type of propeller like cpp or uh, means capital propeller or other type of propeller design which you can improve the propulsion system so like this you can improve the cgi rating so as you can see the whole concept is based on the carbon emission so as you can see if you are doing a normal hull in water cleaning in that case you can save up to 25 22 percent of the fuel consumption in gsc emission if you follow the route optimizing if you follow the route optimizing in that case it may happen that you can save you can burn less amount of fuel and you can ultimately reduce the co2 emission so friend in today's video we learn that how we can improve the cia rating what will happen if we don't improve our performance over a period of year and if you sit idle in that case we will fall ultimately in a below category so we need to improve our operational parameter every year and for that reason the cii has come up to the market then after that we know by calculation method we have seen that what is the dd vector what how the rating is calculated after that what is attain cii what is cii reference what is require cii so how this rating work we know now okay so what is g1 g1 is a calculation of attain cii this is a calculation of attain cii g2 is a calculation of reference line g3 is a calculation of required and g4 is talking about the cii rating so these are the guidelines which are published g1 g2 g4 by the imo for the required thing so friend if you have gained something from this video if you have gained something from this video please do subscribe and if you want to clear examination have a clear concept and if you want to talk to me then please join the membership thank you friend